Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery preparing to feed a couple of my red wiggler worm bins. As you can see, this stuff out of my freezer has been sitting here for a little while. You can tell because it's kind of get, getting a little bit damp and glossy from all the humid air condensing onto the frozen materials. And since it's so cold, the, the humid air is condensing onto this container too, making my glove kind of wet. So uh, that's the stuff we're going to be feeding these two bins. These two bins are more than a month apart in terms of their ages. The older one over here is 240 days of age and the one right here is 205 days of age so the math on that's pretty quick 35 days basically five weeks difference in their ages and my um my other thing that I've got here that I wanted to include in the feeding is something that you see fairly frequently in my feedings which is some of my worm chow and this batch of worm chow is mainly bird seed the little tiny bit of um, peanut shell blended in but I was starting to get a pretty good sized collection of peanut shells piling up so I actually took a bunch of it and ground that down and this is nothing more than just peanut shell and I've been kind of curious as to whether or not worms will even eat this stuff or what what they'll do with regards to that stuff because you know when I used to use bird seed, well, I still do, obviously, like I said, this last batch is mainly bird seed. I, um, I would not normally blend in stuff like uh, pumpkin seeds or a little bit of extra sunflower seeds and then add some old pancake mix or add some neem cake to it or whatever. Kind of spice the stuff up and create a nice little assortment of different materials. Um, but this batch here is almost all bird seed and you know if you if you've ever fed bird seed to your birds or if you got a bird feeder you'll know that to a large degree depending on what kind it is I suppose there's a lot of shell in there you know a lot of um, sunflower seed shell I mean some of the seeds in there are just seeds without a shell but um I was starting to wonder if my my most current batch of you know, worm chow was even very interesting to the worm since it's mainly bird seed, which is mainly, in the end, a bunch of sunflower seed shells. Um, but then even pushing that same thinking further, I started to think to myself, well, if I've got a bunch of, you know, peanut shells, there's really no seed, no nut, no nothing there. That's just basically shells. <laughs> and whether the worms would like that stuff at all was, um, I guess... A little bit of a curiosity to me so I wondered if it was even worth the effort to hang on to the peanut shells and grind them up but I wanted to do a little test with that stuff today so that's the reason I've got it here to be included with our feeding today but it's going to be done a little bit differently it's going to be done sort of the way I've done in some of my other systems where I've taken the uh, the worm chow and used a piece of top covering paper spread the worm chow out onto it and then put plastic coverings on. So as you saw when I removed the top coverings here today, it was nothing more than just a piece of newspaper. So I've got a couple sheets of plastic. We we're going to return to plastic coverings here just so we can conduct that, this test that I'm curious about. So that on one bin we're going to have just a top covering piece of newspaper with some of my worm chow and then on the next bin we're going to have another similar top covering paper with the peanut, the ground up peanut shells. And then we'll be able to see if there's much of a difference or any difference in how the worms react or respond to those two different types of dry foods being placed out, out on the surface. So to get that stuff to even see any worm activity that's the reason I uh, figured we would have to bring back the plastic coverings otherwise the kind of like you see here the top surface tends to get a little bit dry and doesn't see a lot of worm traffic as a result of that but by placing plastic coverings you sort of create this um, vapor barrier and a moisture zone right beneath the plastic causing the worms to come up for all those little dew droplets collecting on the plastic and then uh, that collecting moisture also has a tendency to soak whatever's beneath it like the top covering paper that we're going to position over there so 
that's kind of my game plan here. I've got my scissors so that we can start hacking up those top covering newspapers to use them for this test. And um, as I was ex excavating the feeding zone over here in the older of the two bins, you might have seen me just sort of remove a little stick that seemed to me like it wasn't going to go anywhere. And this to me almost feels like a rock. So I'm going to exclude this as well. Um, some of the other things that I excavated out of the feeding zone are some very slow composting items, such as the shell of a mango seed, and even a slower item, which is this cork. This cork's been going for many, many years now, so that thing will just probably go with the worms to their new home whenever they get relocated. But at 240 days of age, I think we've still got a few more feedings left in these systems. I believe that in the older bin here, we're up to feeding number 21 here today and I'm not sure I can't remember the exact number perhaps feeding 17 or 18 over here in the younger bin the 205 day old bin um, so yeah novelty items here not only a um, couple slow composting items such as mango seed shell and a cork but there was also this the stem of a pumpkin so we may or may not bump into similar objects over here in the younger bin I don't remember what's in here we might see something similar so here yep here's another seed of a mango we just evicted a whole bunch of worms from it but you can see that there's a whole bunch of springtails enjoying the inside of that thing as well oh and look at all the springtails on this thing this is actually the seed within the husk and the springtails are just going bananas for that thing can you believe it I wonder if I can hold this thing still long enough to create a little bit of a fast motion clip so we can really see these guys move. I don't know how long that was perhaps a minute and a half two minutes or so wasn't really paying that much attention but hopefully that clip will turn out okay I usually like to put these seeds right back into the husk and let it continue as if it had just gotten to this point naturally and obviously it hasn't gotten to that point naturally with all the help we've given the husk being torn open like that and other things not sure what other sorts of older food items we're going to locate down here but I think we've pretty much opened up these feeding zones sufficiently to come in with a fairly generous feeding so besides using one of those newspaper um, sheets that were out on here on top of these two containers as after it's been cut in half as two top covering papers but smaller ones that'll fit under the plastic I figured I would use the other one just as supplementary bedding down in the feeding zones. Kind of like we did last week. Last week we just took a sheet of newspaper, split it in half, and spread that piece of paper down underneath the feeding zone as sort of the base for the feeding. Last week I simply tore the paper, but right now I've luckily got my handy scissors here so we'll just use the more elegant way of cutting the paper in half so one of the top covering sheets is coming down here into the feeding zone and then the other half is coming into the other systems feeding zone and it did seem to me like since this was all we provided last time effectively as bedding for the feeding seemed like it was a little bit skimpy so I wanted to also come in with my prepared bedding to see if we can build out the feeding zone a little bit more and give these guys a little boost to their bedding that's sort of been my theme lately I guess maybe my main motivation for that is the fact that I just shredded a, a great deal of cardboard and brown paper bag material so I've got almost two full buckets of this stuff sitting off on the side so um I've been feeling like I should be pretty generous with my bedding 
sometimes I'm a little bit stingy when it comes to the bedding because you know I just don't have so much and I don't have the time to make more but right now I am pretty much in surplus mode with bedding so I think that's only to the benefit of the wormies yeah this stuff's been out here thawing for some time now these frozen bits of banana are pretty much all thawed out at this point I just took this thing and snapped it in half while it was still frozen here perhaps at the center of this bundle of different types of foods maybe we'll find some stuff that's still a little bit frosty and frozen but this stuff is thawing out pretty quickly as well so here's the stem end of a head of cabbage there's only one of those to go around so perhaps that's a fair way to do it since this large leaf ended up over here as well as this fairly large chunk of the inner core of the head of cabbage this uh this stuff here I don't even know what it is some other sort of green leafy material there's a variety of different other stuff in here perhaps the peels off some cucumbers perhaps the peels off some squash I think there's some ends of radishes in here so it's a pretty nice assortment of different types of foods they're getting here and there's even a little bit of moisture sitting down here at the bottom of the transport container that we can drip in here all these delicious juices or I'm not even sure if it's juices at this point I would say it's probably just condensation from the humid air collecting on the cold materials and dripping down and it's usually at this point that I'll maybe come in with my worm chow and spice up the feeding with a little bit of worm chow but we're gonna save the worm chow and the pulverized peanut shell for the end so here all we're gonna do is come in with a little bit of my prepared bedding and top off the feeding creating a pretty good size feeding zone here which consists mainly of brand new bedding And as you can see, besides the shredded paper and cardboard, I do mix a lot of leafy material into my prepared bedding. And the stuff is damp, so it um, it's not going in here dry. But um, let's not forget that we've also got to return some of these older items. The cork, we'll put that dead center. We'll put the mango seed off to the side. The pumpkin stem over here can go off to the side too. On this system here, we've only had the crazy mango seed with the seed still intact and getting worked down in large part by springtails but I guess the worms are getting their bit on that too a little bit and then some of this newspaper that was part of the last feedings bedding can all go back too and I think now we're ready to backfill the feeding zone and then we can come in here with our feeding zone indicators and proceed to doing our top covering setup with these two different types of materials we're going to lay out as a test. So it's usually at this point that I use the covering up of the feeding zone as my excuse to go grab some material from the outer edges and at the same time spend just a little bit of extra time to stir the stuff around and see how everything looks out there everything's got a pretty good moisture content to it but nothing feels muddy or clumpy which is perfect that might be part of the reason we transferred over to paper only type coverings here but I think we're gonna be safe covering up with plastic in here there's nothing in here that to me seems like it would kick up the moisture content you know to the point where things will start getting clumpy or muddy I think we're going to be in pretty good shape here. At this point I'm really just sort of aiming to create a level top surface. And I guess we can come back with our feeding zone indicators. Even though we're going to come in on top of those with our sort of our pulverized material test for the peanut shells. Um, those feeding zone indicators can just go back where they were, follow tradition, I guess. And perhaps as a result of being under the plastic and getting damp and also by being right below where we're going to be spreading some of that pulverized 
peanut shell and worm chow, maybe we're going to cause a little bit more breakdown of those feeding zone indicators because those feeding zone indicators being out on top and then being covered only with a sheet of newspaper have remained more or less dry and as a result of being dry haven't seen a whole lot of worm activity so that'll change as soon as we cover up with plastic a lot of times I'll use bubble wrap to cover up my systems that's a really nice top covering in the worm bins especially if you lay the bubbles down leaving little air gaps underneath the plastic sheet but today we're just going to come in with paper um, plastic bags as our top covering so that's where we fed those are our feeding zone indicators and then back comes this second top covering which we're going to once again split in half one going into one bin as the top covering the other going into the other bin as a the top covering and then that's going to be our test platform for laying in the worm chow as well as the pulverized peanut shells so over here in the older bin the 240 day old bin we're going to come in with the worm chow and like I've been doing in at least one other system we're just going to put it into a distinct pattern so that it's easy to see next time we come back in what happened or what didn't happen. So I'm laying it down in a diagonal fashion. So I wonder if we can maybe even leave ourselves a little indicator. Can I create the letter C? <laughs> it looks like a letter C from my direction. From your side it might look like an up to upside down C. <laughs> All right, I wonder if I'm going to have as much luck creating the letter P Oop, with the peanut shells. And I am curious. I wonder what they're going to think of the peanut shells. I don't know. Perhaps I can just try letter S instead, instead of P. Ooh, that's quite a bit. Let's see if we can transform it into the letter S. At least that's what it looks like from my direction. This will be the shells. This will be the chow. <laughs> and hopefully by putting plastic coverings on, we're going to trigger the recirculation of moisture down in these bins, causing the top surface to stay nice and damp resulting in a lot more worm traffic now rather than causing the worms to have to stay down low to stay in nice damp comfortable material pretty much all portions of the system will be fair game for worm traffic now and I'm very curious to see what they're going to think of the peanut shells I'm pretty sure I've heard of people mentioning how they've ground up peanut shells and added them to their worm bins but I don't recall anyone talking about what kind of a result it caused so I figured we would try it and perhaps I'll even get some feedback in the comments from people who've already done this and give me a little bit of a sneak preview as to what to expect in here next time we check in, whenever that may be. All right, everyone, that's it for our check-in with these now 240 and 205-day-old Red Wiggler bins undergoing our test with the peanut shell in the younger bin and the worm chow test in the older bin. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.